there are no two identical realities about the world and narrowing it down about experiences, even facts and memories. Not only that your recollection about your past is wrong, but recent findings show that 50% of your memories are not true at all. You will constantly change your memories over time. Please don't forget to support this channel. Subscribe, engage with the content in any way you feel inspired, and let's roll the YouTube algorithm. An event won't be perceived the same way by two people. Imagine a wedding. Not yours. It was maybe the best wedding you ever attended. Your dress or suit looked marvelous on you. Everyone complimented you the entire night. You laughed, danced, sang, had amazing meals and your experience was superb. Until 3 a.m. Now the story changes a bit to match your gender. If you are a woman, imagine that at 3 a.m., during some laughter with a happy group of people, one of them trips and pours a glass full of red wine on your white dress. Now, I'm not sure why would you compete with the bride by wearing white, but let's pass this. Your dress is destroyed. No way to get to the bathroom and just take that stain off. It's too extended all over your dress. Your night is completely ruined. You rush home and implant into your memory what? That you attended a wedding and something horrible happened to you. Years after years you shared that story with more or less accurate details, up to 50%. It doesn't matter that if you do some math, you'll find that you just spent 8 amazing hours on that wedding and that incident took only 1 second, plus 10 minutes of anger, frustration and what you may have done till you left the party. Even if the event itself took 1 second, we'll be generous and count it 10 minutes. But 10 minutes to 8 hours means 2%. Your reality will be 2% accurate. That's not good, I would say. Now, if you are a man at 3am in your group of dizzy friends, after a consistent amount of combined drinks, one of them slips a seemingly innocent information. He says to you in front of the others with a smiley, silly face. Oh, by the way, I saw your wife last week in front of the Marriott Hotel downtown. She looked gorgeous. Your face goes pale and you have no idea how to leave the wedding without showing that you could strangle that friend and grab your wife in a corner to put some questions because according your recollection, she was visiting her parents last week in a different state. What will you end in your memory about that wedding? How wonderful it was, or the terror you felt before your life went into turmoil. Remember, the wedding was perfect. Those poor newlyweds did their best to create an amazing experience to everyone. They have zero things to do with what happened last week. But you remember their wedding as being a horrible experience. Perception will always outrule reason. Even better, just to see how these filters work and how terrible we are to perceive reality objectively. When you experience something like this and you attach it to the entire event, you will alter the entire thing to match your perception. In some years, after the wedding, more than likely if someone asks you about that wedding, you won't say it was horrible because of your wife, but you'll insert matching information to back up your story. You say something like, it was a cheap wedding, horrible food, bad drinks, too much noise, bad music or crazy people. Anything to match your perception to your inner state and emotions. This is the magic we can constantly alter, but we also can create. Now it's advisable to create something positive, right? People are, on a much larger scale, subjective without knowing and not realizing how much they alter the reality all the time. This applies everywhere. Since I am a mind maniac and studied all fields including forensics and criminology, the reality shows a lot of flaws in the system. There are way too many witnesses who can put people in jail recognizing them as being sure they are right when they are wrong. But eyewitness testimony has been a mainstay of justice since biblical times even if there are crucial evidences otherwise. 
Just imagine that after hundreds of studies over the past 30 years, there is almost nothing less reliable than what an eyewitness thinks he saw. We may believe that we remember things precisely, but most of our memories are a combination of what we think we observed and the information we have been exposed to since then. The situation becomes worse at crime scenes where variables such as stress and the presence of a weapon interfere with accuracy. If you regard memory as trace evidence, which most of the field's psychologists do, it is the most delicate and easily contaminated kind. Yet police take less care in collecting and preserving memory than they do with, say, blood or partial fingerprints. And most courts pay insufficient attention to how memory evidence was collected and retrieved. There is a study showing that of 297 cases that have been overturned by DNA evidence in the United States, more than 70% were based on eyewitness testimony. Those witnesses were not liars or jailhouse snitches, but ordinary people, utterly convinced that their memories were accurate. And this may be the tip of the iceberg. Tens of thousands of people are indicted every year because of a witness had picked them out of a lineup. Or when you interrogate multiple witnesses of that same crime, you will have multiple stories. Good investigators take everything in consideration. They know what to look for and where stories should match and where they can be deviated a little. Same with the reactions they get. It may be tempting to condemn the husband for murdering his wife because his grieving method is a cold one, showing no emotions. But there are multiple ways to cope with pain and maybe he was raised to deal with horrible situations with dignity. But we'll alter our world and judge others based on our program and our program is built with the help of these filters. Same is with questionaries and data collection. I would love to quote here from David Ogilvy, the founder of one of the biggest marketing agencies out there, founded in 1948. People don't think what they feel, don't say what they think, and don't do what they say. We also know from all those studies conducted by scientists and professors like Dan Ariely that people are predictably irrational. His bestseller book makes a point about our accuracy when it comes to data and how we can deceive even ourselves according to context and situations. The entire world, how it looks like, is the result of our filtering, how we perceive things. We can change how we see things based on our mood, for example. If you wake up in a bad mood, you tend to see the world in a different way, right? It's completely different when you wake up cheerful and happy. Just knowing how a person woke up that day will give you valuable information about the outcome of his, her day or the quality of the interaction between you and that person. But we don't give importance to such information and we constantly omit to contextualize when context is queen and king. Remember this. Everything can change your perception. Another amazing thing is with languages. Because we are programmed by language, each language has its unique traits and distinctions. Some languages don't have words like other languages, or the way verbs are used, the popular ones, proverbs and sayings, all have an effect about the perceived reality. Those who speak two languages have a broader view about the world just because of that. Those with three even broader and so on. You can safely say that multilingual people have a more complex mindset and are able to see the world better than those who are limited by one language and one space. Think of tribes in Africa. And keep in mind that the main influencer will always be the language you are thinking with. If you like this content, please support this channel and keep yourself close for future content like this. See you next time!